다음에는 어, 구스타프 헬베리브가 이제 원래는 페널티 스커션이지만 본인의 이 탈주체죠 의미 구조의 사진에 대해서 한번 어, 짧게 어, 발표를 하시겠습니다. 감사합니다. I'm going to try to um, steer this to um, the topic. Oh, first of all, I'd like to thank thank uh, the Biennale for letting me be here and inviting me here. Um, so I'm going to try to steer this back to uh, the topic that I was invited here to, which is called uh, the subjected meaning of contemporary photography and the role it plays. And honestly, I didn't really understand that. Uh, but my, my, my spontaneous answer to that was, it has none. But that would have been a very short um, uh, talk. Uh, so I lingered on it and I titled my um, little talk here, uh, A Medium Rare, and Photography is Everything. So I'm an artist. Uh, my, ex my professional experience of photography is very brief. It started on the 1st of March this year uh, when I uh, started teaching at the Chungan University at the photography department there. So um, yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge to be at a photo biennale talking about photography when you're not a photographer. Although I've, al I've always used photography uh, in my practice as an artist. I've been photographing using as a documentation, as you do, you sh take photographs of your works, and you send it out, but it's also part of my actual process. Uh, I have never in my career thought about photography. It never occurred to me as a student and it has never occurred to me um, ever actually. So th this little uh, what I'm going to talk about is something that I'm, I'm leaning heavily now on two texts, one text by Rosalind Krauss and one by Peter Lunefeld. And they are almost 20 years old, but I think they actually have some, um, we can still, um, um, so, um, let's talk about medium and photography as a medium or a, uh, what is a medium. Uh, and because my, my practice is mediumless, what I'm working with. I'm, I'm, I'm just using the mediums that I find uh, appropriate to create my, my work and whatever I want to say with my work. And uh, there's been a lot of um, talks about mediums in the, art, in the history of art and uh, in the 50s. I mean, Greenberg had came up here earlier today and I mean, that should have been like that painting was the pinnacle of, of art and modernism and, and whatnot. Um, and I think that was actually really strange that that discussion was happening 60 years ago, 70 years ago, because artists have not stuck to their mediums anyway, uh, and especially not painters. Uh, and photography, what is uh, photography uh, when we talk about artists? We might not... Uh, we think about photographers as just taking photographs. Um, in, in the 60s, the uh, American land art movement, they used pho photography, but maybe not just to show we are photographers. Um, I think they consider themselves as something else. And um, yeah, how do we define photography? And I'm just going to jump very quickly through some images here. So. Um, this is uh, maybe not a photography, um, it's an image, and it's made by Daguerre, uh, who we might, uh, he looked like that when he was photographed, and he probably was photographed with something looking like that, and that's a device that he, as we know, um, invented about 200 years ago. And uh, so this might be one of the first images made by uh, that machine. And then there was an English uh, fellow called Henry Fox Talbot that um, also, well, he was also um, creating an image machine. This is, uh, this is a, a text, this is a word. This is, in binary code, this spells photography. And, um, and binary code is what we today 
use uh, when we make photographs or we make images with devices. Um, so is this an image or what is it? Uh, is it a photograph? Could be a photograph, uh, could be a text, it could be anything. Uh, the only thing we are sure about is a, is a binary code, it's ones and zero. It's off and on in an electrical circuit. Uh, and this, this makes it a little bit problematic for us to, um, I think, talk about uh, photography as we used to do it. Um, and if we go back to the 30s and Walter Benjamin and his uh, work, the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction, as it is badly translated into to English from German, because in German he actually talks about uh, the technical, uh, 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 the artwork in the time of its technical re reproductivity. Uh, so it's not mechanical, which the English translation is there. And if you, if you take the German translation, or the German, the, the German uh, title, it actually still works pretty well today, because it can include uh, the di digital era, which is um, where, we, um, where we are right now. Or we have been in it for quite some time, but I think we are just now so overwhelmed by, by um, digital everything. And it's difficult for us to um, um, define what is what does a digital code actually make? Because it can create an image, it can create a sound, a 3D object, or just about anything. Um, so Rosalind Krauss wrote. Uh, in, the eight, late, in the end of the 90s, she wrote this uh, essay called A Voyage on the North Sea, Art in the Age of the Post-Medium. And the title, uh, in the post-medium condition, sorry. And um, that was uh, the title she, she lent from um, uh, Brothers, and that's, this is his hybrid work <coughs> that he made in the early 70s. And it's like, it's, it's a film, uh, it was, and it's a book, and it's photographed, it's all at the same time. So it's, it's a sort of a, uh, a hybrid work. And um, what, what Rosalind Krauss said, which I don't really agree with, but she said uh, that in the 60s, the televisual porta pack, which she probably uh, talked about uh, Sony's first video camera that you could carry around with you if you were strong. And, um, and she, she said that that killed American independent cinema. Uh, and, and that that was supposed to be a declaration of film's obsolescence. I don't, I don't really think that because now, um, I mean, 50 years after, or 60 years after, no, 50 years after those cameras were used, I think uh, independent cinema and American independent cinema is uh, alive and kicking. Um, so it probably has, um, it's not dying uh, just yet. But I think um, uh, that this uh, is, can be linked to the, to the computer, the development of computer processing, and its increased speed and its graphical uh, possibilities. Uh, but foremost, the development of internet. Uh, and this has become a large, if not the largest arena for all sorts of, of cinema products and Im image products at the moment. And, uh, I think we can go back to what, what Walter Benjamin once uh, predicted, and uh, nothing um, brings the promise encoded at the birth of technolo technological form to light as effectively as the fall into obsolescence of its final stages of development. I'm not going to go further with that, but I just let, let it just ring with us for a bit. So, what Rosalind Krauss talks about in her in her essay from the late 90s, it's about like the end of the medium, that we are now, we're now working in, a, in an era where artists can just um, leave the medium. Um, and I think as a practic practitioner, as an artist, I, I didn't really care about mediums and I th think that most of my peers didn't either care so much about uh, their mediums. 
And when I started in Stockholm in the 90s, uh, the most interesting um, art school was a photography department at the other place, not the, where I was studying. And it was not because they were photographers, it was, it was because they had the most interesting teachers, they had the most interesting discussion, and they, was, they were kind of pushing, um, pushing art in general uh, forward. And most of those uh, people who started there, yeah, they were my close friends then, and they still are, and we never discussed photography. However, you would definitely consider that they are photographers because they use cameras and film and, and whatever. So, after brothers, I think we should have a look at this guy, Darwin. And um, if, we, if we talk about evolution, yeah, I mean, that's, that's Darwin. Or if we talk about hybrid, yeah, we can, we can go into and dr draw these parallels with, uh, with biology. However, in, in biology, hybrid is a very bad term because a hybrid, a, like a crossbreed of, um, of two species, they usually become sterile, they don't, they don't function. And then they're not very um, normally a pair natural. They are usually enforced by, by humans that um, let donkeys and horses mate uh, and things like that. Um, so it doesn't really work, but in, uh, I think if you just use it as a word, I think it really functions really well um, and it becomes a fruitful thing when you, when you crossbreed things and over the, the borders of mediums. And uh, I'm, now I'm just going to read some quotes from Rosalind Krauss uh, when she refers to Jack, uh, Jack Derrida, who says that um, the resonance between the post-medium position and post-structuralism and the law of the genre uh, that's um, Jack Derrida built a demonstration after demonstration to show that the idea of an interior set apart from our uncontaminated by an exterior was a chimera, a metaphysical fiction. And she even, and she also goes on, uh, so now I'm just quoting straight from Krauss, but she quotes Frederick Jameson. Uh, and he showed us a world where the aesthetic experience is now everywhere. And this is where I want to come. Uh, our aesthetic experience is now everywhere, in an expansion of culture that has not only made the notion of an individual work of art wholly problematic, but has also emptied out the very concept of aesthetic autonomy. And she goes on and talks about Jay's Jameson, and, and she kind of ends with a, what I think is very beautiful. And is everything is now fully translated into the visible and the culturally familiar including all critiques of this situation. Uh, aesthetic attention, he says, finds itself transferred to the life of perception as such. And that's what he calls a new life of postmodern sensation in which the perceptual system of the capitalism experience everything from shopping to all forms of leisure as aesthetic, thereby rendering anything that could be called properly aesthetic sphere obsolete. So then we kind of end in this thing, no photography. Blasphemy here, but I'll, I'll go for blasphemy now. And this is then a famous painting by Gerard Richter. It's called Betty. And maybe our fantastic uh, translators can translate this into Korean. So, this was an answer to, um, in, a, in an interview that H.D. Uh, Buchlot made in, in 1986, and it was made before he painted that painting. So I'll jump to the close-up to this. So was Gerhard Richter protecting painting as a genre or a medium with this answer to H.D. Buchlot in an interview in 1986? Uh, Buchlot responds to what, um, that were that paintings. I have, and then, um, Buchlaw says, have lost their descriptive and representational uh, function, among other reasons, because photography does it so perfectly. Hence, this task is simply, simply no longer given. And, yeah, I think that Buchlaw was uh, quite late with that analysis. It, it might have been a 19th century um, debate if it was painting or photography. And... Uh, and then he based it on that uh, photography also could make a perfect representation of anything. 
And while photography cannot make perfect representation, it can make nothing more besides perfect photographs. I think we could listen to, to Richter that he's one of these painters as Daguerre, uh, who uses photographies and some typical qualities often attached to photography and photographies and images. I think we should read his meaning as produced by an artist, and in this case, it was more lyrical than academic, his answer. So, although Gerard Richter's artist practice is a hybrid between photography and painting, his artworks would rightly be considered paintings. Richter, Richter paints, we, we can't doubt that. It would be sufficient to call it image or art making, but the fact that he's applying paint on a surface it makes is an act of painting, an activity existing also outside of the art world, art world. If we try the same with photography, this doesn't apply, because there is no unequivocal definition of what photography is. Maybe it has been possible to define photography by describing it as a method to capture images made from light, electromagnetic waves, traveling through an apparatus onto a medium such as a chemically prepared metal plates, paper, or suitable materials. To that, we have to add that we, for more than a century, also have achieved image-making processes which are made without light, such as sound waves and radioactive radiation. After the two nuclear bomb blasts of the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, shadow shapes was found of disintegrated people. Are those photographies? Can we call those shadow image photographs? Some would say no, as it wasn't the intention to make photographs that triggered the bomb blasts. As a matter of fact, the process is similar to that what happens in a normal analog camera, except that the chemically prepared surface to receive and save the image on. And there is, there is a number of uh, other devices that also makes images that we might not consider a part of photography, like a photocopier, the Xerox machine, the teleprinter, the telefax, and the television and the video. They've been around now for almost a century. So are they part of photography or are they not part of photography? They are indisputable image-making devices, but how do we fit them in, in the, to the perception of photography? More important, can we leave them out? With a digital image and digital image making, there is no way around it. Photography doesn't exist anymore. We can't define photography. We, know we need to talk about image making. Um, and I'm not going to read everything that I have written about Peter Lunenfeld and things, but there's another, another thing about just, not, it's not just a binary code. We're also in this kind of super influx of, um, uh, th there's so much images around us, and we're and today we can also and now I'm use I'm I'm actually borrowing this from from Bak Sengwo, who said in a in a video at the MMCA, which we now can go and watch at, that everyone can take a perfect photograph because the machines that we take them with are so are so good, uh, or something like that. I'm not quoting perfectly here. My memory is um, not what it used to be. But we have come to uh, um, a place now in time where there's no clear line between production and consumption of photographic, photographic image. Are we producing images or are we just consuming images? And, uh, and one thing that Peter Lunenfeld uh, kind of con concluded in his uh, talks about a uh, dugative image End of, end of the 90s, it is, uh, he pointed out that digital photograph distanced itself from its referent and that it have had the same impact as the destruction of the aura occasioned by the advent of photography itself. So I think he said that, it, and I kind of want to uh, provoke that thing as well, that maybe we are now to back to the time before 1839 where there was no, um, th uh, there was no photography. So there was image making. There were painters using uh, camera obscuras, and there were painters who actually um, invented the cameras that are similar to the cameras that we use today. I think this is the only desubjected meaning of contemporary photography and the role it can play. I will leave the, world, the word photography in the last sentence as photography is image making, as is painting, and as is computer generated imagery. When it comes to image making, it's all about the meaning of the image that matters. When we grasp form, traditions, and laws of genres as qualities of an image, we lose any other meaning it could harbor. 
As such, the image becomes a superficial shell, emptied, emptied of its power. Uh, the fundament that Rosalind Krauss carved away under her feet, writing her book, uh, like a sectaristic worshipping of all mediums' autonomy, helps her and us to build a new fundament for an image discourse to build on. Image making thus has a bright future. How will it work? How will it be made? And how we should understand it needs a new set of thoughts. Our social and economic situations have changed, and so has technology. The digital era demands new definition concepts. Digital information and its encryption has, a, has changed the rules for how we need to comprehend a world built on binary codes. Copyright laws, for instance, have become obsolete, mainly because we cannot yet define what it is we have to define. A lot of this discussion is uh, semantic, but we stand in front of a concrete complex of problems. Digital image, image or computer-generated generated imagery has created a certain chaos in the image world, and it raised havoc within, photo in the, within the photography world by ripping away the last definition support for photography. To us, inside the industry of image making and image using, the confusion and debate will accelerate until we can't look away from the one fact that we have to rethink. Meanwhile, we will make more images and more art. Can somebody die? 네, 저 이미지 제작이라는 이 프로세스의 변화가 이제 사진에서의 더 이상 경계랄지 매체의 자율성이랄지 이런 거에서 벗어나서 앞으로는 이 이진법의 시대가 새로운 이미지의 지평을 열게 된다 그런 논지의 주장이었습니다.